So let's just take a quick look at one of the other apps in the FS Widget suite for the iPad. We're going to look at the EFB, Electronic Flight Bag. That's this one. Now there's, again, there's some overlap between this and the other apps. We've got initially we've got a blank screen. If you look along the bottom of this screen, it's somewhat reminiscent of the other apps we've seen. This is basically a repository, a filing system for three different things. That's nominally charts, manuals and weather images. Now actually you can put pretty much what you want in these things as we'll see. There's also a map which is which is a moving map. So this is an overlap with the IG Map HD product. It is connected, FSX is running at the moment. We're motoring down the west coast of India and so you can see we don't have any choice of the maps here by default, there is no map icon as there is in the flight planner or in the moving map product. We have the same chart selector icon as we have in the IEG map HD. The problem with this is that uh, we don't get any charts. In the moving map we get all the charts free. In this application we don't get any charts except the demo one. The demo one's no use to us. <laughs> yeah. So we're stuck with this one which looks like the base road map world road map which which is okay you know in the sense that this is a, an EFB rather than a moving map product we can load the flight plan so that's the flight plan all the way from Kibrit to Mumbai we're flying the last leg of that at the moment so that's pretty handy as before because we've got the web data product we can turn on the airfields we can turn on the VORs there don't seem to be many VORs in this vicinity. <laughs> um, and we can turn on the intersections. Likewise, there don't seem to be, there's a few there. Um, again, we notice that clustering of the data into that, what I presume is the same sized geographical region. In common with what we uh, function we have on the moving map product we have this go to nearest airport so we can choose if I choose one that's uh, 230 miles away Jai Sama do I say that it cancels the flight plan and it basically constructs a, a simple new flight plan which is direct to that airport so that's pretty much it for the moving map we've got I haven't seen this I haven't shown this before but we've got the, the compass rose I did I did complain when I looked at the flight planner that Although we can show VORs, we don't get the compass rows with the VOR. Now this sort of compensates for that by, you know, if you put the VOR near the centre of the screen, you get the magnetic headings displayed on that compass rows. Rudimentary moving map. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So let's go back to these other things. Let's look at charts first. Nothing to show, but this is hooked up to my Dropbox. If you look on the settings, it's got the Dropbox link. So we've got a chart. If we click the plus, that syncs to the Dropbox folder for this app and it shows that I've created some subfolders. It only understands one layer of subfolders in the charts folder and the advice given is that you label these by airport. So I've got one for Luton, one for, let's look at the one for Mumbai which is where we're heading. I've only got one thing in here which is the airport chart pack for Mumbai. It's a 72 page PDF file which in one sense is great, it's comprehensive it's got aerodrome briefing, it's got a plan uh, another plan that's a plan of the aprons uh, the terminals some general information what you can't do is chop this up you certainly with this application or bookmark it you know 72 pages, you don't want to be pulling this up and then searching for the the SID or the star or the approach plate that you want, they're all here. But you ought to be able to bookmark these. So that's pretty unhelpful. The other thing is, if you try and zoom, the, pinch zoom these, if I, I'm zooming out there, if I let go, it goes back. You can actually zoom in, but you can't zoom out. So that's somewhat useful-ish, except that because these, these charts are the ones that this page is for example is a portrait orientation and I have my iPad in landscape orientation you know I'd like to be able to zoom out we can turn this into this is not going to work properly on the video but I can turn it on its side 
and then I can get the full page displayed correctly. Now in practice you'd probably that'd probably be quite convenient um, and doable so that's not too bad. So there you go, you've got everything you need about Mumbai there. Now of course what you could do is because of that lack of bookmarking and so on you could go on your PC and extract the right pages or get these from another source and upload them as separate individual documents then you'd have access to them one at a time. I haven't done that. Now the other obvious thing we could do is to find some other way of viewing PDFs. And let's have a look at that. Acrobat Reader if we get the Adobe Acrobat Reader from the App Store, which is free. Uh, so, apps, right, we'll go to FS Widgets, EFB. If I go to Charts and we look for that VABB PDF, we'll open that. So here we've got the same information. Okay, same deal, we can't zoom out, but um, we could annotate the PDF. We can highlight, we can probably write on here stuff. What else can we do? We can set bookmarks. Uh, now there are bookmarks in here already. This is a PDF file. So we can, so this is gold already. We don't have to do any work. We've loaded this into PDF Reader we can go to the let's see arrivals via DME Arc ILS runway 14 bingo there it is my god that looks complicated anyway so the point of that is there's a PDF reader that you can get for free that will you know at first glance outperform whatever this thing can do with aerodrome charts and approach plates and so on so that's the charts if we move on to manuals same deal Linked into Dropbox, you create subfolders and you can put documents in there. Again, these are PDF files. This is essentially a PDF reader. Um, I think it, start, it if I look at the help, it'll tell you probably what formats are supported. So you can load PDF, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Excel, RTF and text files. But again, all of those could be opened just as conveniently in another application. So it's difficult to know what you gain from using this application other than a you know a very simple file management structure. But you know there's no doubt 50 free apps you can get that will do that. But for now this is at our fingertips in the same application along with a rudimentary moving map. I've loaded some things in here just as an illustration. We've got the Twin Otter extended manuals so we've got the systems here. Again, these are portrait orientation. They're bigger than, than they need to be on this landscape screen, but you can't fit the screen, fit, fit the document to screen. You have to turn it into um, the other orientation, but you've got the document there. We've got the checklists here as well. But again, you can't bookmark a particular checklist and flip to it. Yeah, so those are the Twin Otter. We've got Bendix King Autopilot Manual here. This is the real deal. This is a 42-page manual. Again, common theme here, no bookmarks. You know, the page numbers are not even hyperlinked. I uh, don't know if they are in the PDF file. We'll see that. Well, let's just check that out. Let's go to the Acrobat Reader again. Go to FS Widgets, Manuals, Bendix King, KFC. We look at bookmarks. Well, we've got all the bookmarks here. Our table of contents. Okay, the page numbers are not hyperlinked, but we do have the bookmarks. System operation. GPS capture. So, again, you know, there's little obvious reason to choose between this and 
a different application and, and the Adobe Reader application but uh, we'll just go on with this I've got the GNS 530 and 430 series GPS manuals loaded um, once again these are fitting to page width and that's all you get and this is these are not even this is not even going to look right on the landscape on the portrait display either because these are not a4 or iPad shaped pages this is a sort of almost rec uh, square manual and again this is uh, well this is quite a short manual because this, this is the quick reference but if we look at the pilot guide for the GNS 400 that's a 214 page manual the only way to navigate this is to scoot through it like this and once again I'm betting those page numbers are not they're not oh they are they are they are hyperlinked okay I'll take that back uh, there's no back no back function though, so uh, <laughs> I'll take that back. I'll take that back somewhat. We can't get back to the table of contents, can we? Am I doing this a disservice? I can't find anywhere to press here that's giving me any navigation controls, so I need to close it, open it up again, go to the table of contents, and then click to say page 45 so we're at 45 now we're stuck there we can't go back just once again if I go to Adobe Reader and we load up the same documents table of contents if we go to page 45 it's hyperlinked back Oh no, that's not back. That's back to back to the future. Try that again. Well, anyway, we've got the bookmark, so we we could go to the table of contents probably by clicking on that. We'll leave that for now. Back to EFB. So that's the manuals tab, pretty much in a, in a nutshell does exactly the same as the charts tab makes you wonder why we need two areas here okay I guess one way of answering that is uh, if you've got a manual open and you're at whatever page you want to be at as a reference and you flip over to a chart you can then flip back to the manual flip between the charts and the manuals again nothing you couldn't do in PDF reader because well maybe this doesn't do tabbed on the iPad version but there's probably a way to do that and there's probably a hundred other ways to do that using the suitable iPad apps the only other tab we've got is this thing called weather images now again if I look on the help screen actually if I just while I'm here look at um, the charts folder can only display PDF, PNG, that's an image, and JPEG image files. The manuals folder is a superset of that. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It can't, it can't display images. You can only display the document formats described earlier. Now, it's not clear to me why that should be. Why that should, why that restriction? You know, why can't you display PNG and JPEG files? in the manuals folder. You could have a manual that's been that you've scanned and you don't have it as a PDF, you've got it as or you've got a checklist that you've scanned. That should be, you know, available. I can't see any reason to restrict that. The weather folder can display PNG and JPEG images again. And what this is for, as far as I can work out, it's got this very rudimentary image display uh, console if you like. Uh, there's a thing called a p-list which just seems to be a list of just seem to be a URLs um, in other words web links to aviation web services that resolve to a current image file like a gif or a jpeg and these are the sample ones that it's loaded in these are what Australia 
let's find Europe. So what have you got? Sur surface temp no what do we want? We want surface wind current in Europe. I'm doing this on the twentieth of October. So you can see it's a it's it's a live service that presumably updates the image file every hour or something like that. But it's just a web link to an image. If I show a different one, you can see it's the six most recent ones that I've viewed are stored in these thumbnails and I can and, and actually they're stored on the iPad device so I can flip backwards and forwards between them so yeah I mean if you loaded up the charts that you wanted for the trip you're about to fly then you'd have them readily to hand you know for reference during your flight and again you can flip between the charts and the manuals and the weather images you know I mean somewhat convenient but you could also have let's just demonstrate this you know if I go into Google Chrome this is just a site I've randomly found. We'll look for Pacific, current conditions, Southeast Asia, surface analysis, 24 hour forecast. We'll just click that and we get a chart and it's current and if you look at the address bar it's just, um, it's just a GIF file. So there's no reason why we couldn't find all of these links that are in this plist file, bookmark them in the web browser and use that to display them. So again, all we get really is, a, is the moderately convenient feature of having all these in one place. Is that worth the trouble? You know, if you're going to buy one application and you buy this one, I guess having the rudimentary moving map and the, these, you know, this file management stuff all in one place, it might be just about worth it. But uh, if you've got any sense of organisation and a little bit of ingenuity and spend a bit of time looking for other apps, you can probably construct a much more satisfactory and fully featured way of managing this stuff.